What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Son of a Tech, and I have another performance mashup head to head battle between the MSI RX 480 Gaming X Edition and the EVGA GTX Superclocked. And the game is none other than the brand new Titanfall 2 from Respawn. Stick around for more. Alrighty, so this time around in Titanfall, we actually have a single player campaign. So the benchmark is actually going to be run in the single player campaign. It is going to be right after the first mission. So the pilot's gauntlet and the mission I believe is called BT-274. And it's going to be right after that opening sequence when the Bobot or the Titan is kneeled down in front of you and you need to go get a power core for him. Instead of going to get the power core, you're going to turn tail and run. Well, first, let me clarify. There are going to be two enemies that spawn there to the left of that. And you're going to want to go kill those two enemies first. So we don't have any crazy variables happening before we start the benchmark. Then we're going to turn around and run all the way back. And we're going to run to the far side of the waterfall and turn around. This is where the benchmark is going to start. We're not going to be sprinting or anything like that. So we're going to start from that point with the benchmark and not I'm going to be using fraps because this is a DirectX 11 game. You'll walk straight and try to keep the reticle on the robot the entire time. As you go down the waterway, which I use as a pathway, will go to the left, which is also guiding you through the mission. So you'll go down that waterfall, go to the left, and then sprint and wall run. And then you will jump onto the ledge and turn left and you'll see a pathway to go through. Try to keep the reticle on the space between the roots. Once you kind of move into there, try to look smoothly to the right and continue down that path. You'll have one more raw wall run. Wall run. You'll have one more wall run and then there will be two enemies that you can shoot and kill. It should end on that wall run as you're going to meet those enemies though, so you shouldn't have any variables there. This is a 60 second benchmark. The test bench is going to be an i7-3770K mated to an ASUS Z77 Pro Thunderbolt motherboard. Details will be in the description below. A couple of interesting notes about Titanfall 2 that you might want to consider before we hop into these benchmarks. The ambient occlusion is going to actually be HBAO, just so you guys know exactly which one you're dealing with there. And while the frame rate says not capped and you can turn VSync off or yeah, it doesn't necessarily say not capped. There's just no options in the options menu and it might appear uncapped. It is actually capped at 144 FPS and I was able to confirm this on my GTX Titan XP. That aside, let's hop into the benchmark. Starting off with 1080p on insane with no AA. There'll be no AA or anti-aliasing in any of these tests at this point, just to clarify. The RX 480 scored a minimum of 74 with an average of 101.3 and a max of here it is 144 pretty sure we would get over that if we had the capability and the game itself wasn't locked now on the evga gtx 1060 there was a minimum of 69 and an average of 90.6 with a max of, you guessed it, 144. So at 1080p on insane texture settings and everything else cranked all the way up except for AA, the RX 480 wins handily or hands down. Not sure. Anyways. Let's bump up the resolution to 1440p and see what happens. In this case, of course with anti-aliasing still off but textures on insane, the RX 480 had a minimum of 51 FPS with an average of 70.6 and a max of 108. Eight. We are no longer worried about that 144 FPS cap that's in the game. And on the EVGA GTX 1060, there was a minimum of 50 FPS with an average of 65.5 and a max of 103. Once again, we see a win from the AMD side here, but we are closing that gap curiously enough. 
gets even more interesting once we bump the settings up to 4K, where the RX 480 had a minimum of 28 FPS, an average of 38.6, and a max of 56 FPS. And surprisingly enough, the GTX 1060 closes the gap significantly at higher resolutions with a minimum FPS of 28, an average of 36.9, and a max of 57 frames per second. Second. Now this is cool because this is something we actually were used to seeing kind of flip flop flip flop. This is something we were used to seeing flip flop. What I mean by that is in other games when the RX series first came out, especially DirectX 11 games, we were seeing the Nvidia side win pretty handily at the 1080p settings and then start to lose out as we bumped up resolution. It's kind of odd that it's completely different and the sides have flipped in this case, especially considering that this isn't even DirectX 12. Even more intriguing is that earlier this year, or maybe if it was at the end of last year, the developers from Respawn had issued a statement saying that they weren't that impressed with the improvements of DirectX 12 and they felt that there was a lot of life left in DirectX 11 and that they could get significant performance increases out of DirectX 11. I would say that they have proved their point, but we aren't seeing crazy good 60 FPS numbers at 4K, and we're not even really necessarily seeing a very consistent 60 FPS at 1440p, and the engine is quite old at this point. That doesn't however mean that Titanfall 2 isn't a great game. It's just not going to be a staple in any PC gaming performance benchmarks by any means, especially with a frame cap of 144 FPS. While that's high, it's still capped. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and it helps you make a decision in purchasing a card or in this case maybe even purchasing a game. Please let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe if you're interested in either one of these cards individual performance reviews that include a plethora of other games. Check them out up here and until next time I will see you next Tuesday.